Flave City family, what is up? It is Art and Bobby back in the grocery store to continue the theme of the top five ingredients you wanna avoid in the foods we eat every day. Because we did that video last week, right? And I said, wow, we can't really stop at those five. There's so many more I wanna talk about, so why not make a part two? And the thing is, when you shop in the middle aisle of the grocery store, you're gonna find a lot of prepackaged processed foods. Hey, some are good, right? But a lot of them have additives, preservatives, ingredients that you don't wanna put in your body, and sometimes you might know not know how to identify them, well, I wanna hook you up and show you how to do so. So we're gonna go around and show you the top five food additives to avoid because I don't want you putting those in your body. Before we get rocking and rolling, you know the deal. Like, subscribe, share, all those great things. But you guys, we have so much content going live every single week, you're gonna to wanna to enable the bell icon below the video and enable all push notifications. That way, as soon as we go live with any content, including a live stream on Friday, you do not miss out. All right, let's do some shopping. Now, I like a good turkey sandwich for lunch every once in a while. In fact, yesterday I had a organic sliced turkey sandwich on keto bread with vegan cheese. I griddled it with ghee. So delicious. But the deli case of meat can be a minefield. In fact, when we made that video last year about the best deli meat, it can get scary, right? But here at Whole Foods, it's not as scary. So what do I mean? Well, all right, check this out. We, we grab something like Applegate. Applegate always makes a really high quality product, and I really want to eat organic turkey and organic chicken when it comes to deli meat because they're not eating uh, GMO grain, the animal. But look at the ingredients here. They're very, very simple ingredients, very clean, no filler, all thriller, I like to say, right? So that's great. And it, that's pretty much the case for most of the stuff here. But what do I mean by the bad ones? Well, I had to bring in the outside contraband again. And these are two very common uh, deli meat brands, Hillshire Farm and Lando Frost. Art and I always get a kick out of that name. So Hillshire, this is their turkey breast here. Now you gotta be careful with this, and this is where reading the ingredients can really pay off. Because number one, we see a lot of stuff here I don't like, right? We see modified GMO cornstarch as a filler. They're using carrageenan in the sliced turkey, you guys. That is a nasty CBD emulsifier we talked about in part one of the video last week. But here's public enemy number one when it comes to deli meat sodium phosphates, a very common preservative, but it's also bad for your body. Too many phosphates can really uh, cause you harm, but we also have natural flavor, so that's very common, but you wanna avoid it. And then Land O' Frost, this is the honey ham. Let's see the ingredients here. And once again, they have the sodium phosphates. They also have sodium nitrates, the same stuff you might find in bacon. That's a known carcinogen you wanna avoid, but this is public enemy number two in deli meat, sodium erythrobate. This is what they use actually to make the ham pinker quicker, to make it cure quicker. See how it's pink there? Why would they do that? Why would they want it quicker? Because when you do that, it gets to the store shelves quicker, they can sell it quicker, they can make more, they can make more money. This stuff is really, really bad news. I would not uh, go for it. And I know the Applegate is more expensive, but do yourself a favor. If you're a Costco member, get the big organic pack of Plainville sliced turkey. It is fantastic and it's literally half the price of organic Applegate. It's fantastic. Either way, stay away from those nasties. That is not what you want. You know, Bobby and I were just commenting on the whole Orlando Frost question. We still don't know the answers, but it just got even stranger. Punch in here, Bobby. <laughs> Lansing, Illinois. Illinois is naturally the Lando Frost. I mean, the Lando Lincoln. <laughs> Lando Frost. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> we all know how I feel about sugar, right? I think it's the devil, right? We got to get it out of our bodies and especially added sugar. Added sugar can creep up in a lot of products and they're making a lot of sugar-free products these days. Some are great, right? Sweetened with monk fruit and stevia. Some are bad. Before I get to the bad ones, it kind of surprises me how much sugar products can get away with. Now, they don't sell this here at Whole Foods, but we picked it up at Walmart. This is the Dunkin' Donuts iced coffee here. And this is staggering because in this one bottle here, there's 30 grams of added sugar here. 30 grams of added sugar is literally over seven teaspoons of what kind of sugar? white refined cane sugar here. So guys, seven teaspoons of sugar is totally crazy, right? So you're like, all right, I'm not gonna eat sugar, Bobby. I'll have a sugar-free, what is this? This is the gate, oh, this is not sugar-free. I'll have something that's sugar-free. Well, there's a couple ways you can do it. You can do it the right way, and you can pick up something like this, which is bulletproof zero sugar. How are they doing the zero sugar here? Well, they're doing it right, because if we punch in here, they're doing it with stevia, 
and they're doing it with monk fruit extract. The anerythritol, right, non-GMO. Very, very great. Zero calories, zero glycemic sweeteners that are fantastic for you. But this is a premium product. Not all products do it this way. If we go to something like, where is it? Here. This, this is Propel Electrolyte Water. I get a lot of questions about electrolyte and there's no packet on the market that is Bobby approved because they always add natural flavors. These guys add a bunch of other stuff that's really bad for you. But how is it zero added sugars? Well, because instead of adding a good thing like Stevia, they're adding, where is it? I can't see. Super close. Where, where is that art? Third line on the right. Third line, oh, art, eagle eye art. Also, I can't see up close these days, it's a real problem. Sucralose, there it is. What is sucralose? Sucralose is another word for Splenda. Sucralose and another man-made uh, sugar called aspartame are to be highly avoided. Unlike monk fruit and stevia, which are natural, these are purely man-made, chemically made in a lab. It's not only bad for your gut and your, uh, and your uh, intestines, it also tricks your brain into craving more sugar. So it's totally devastating for you. And you're not just gonna find it in these kind of products. Let me show you over in the salad dressings where you can find it too. I got to do something about these contacts, man. So, someone said I need transitional contact lenses because I'm nearsighted, but nowadays if you put something in front of me here with my contacts on, it's so blurry. So maybe I'll get transitional or some kind of lenses because this can't go on. I can't rely on arts all the time. Now you're not going to find any salad dressings here at Whole Foods that have the really nasty, nasty uh, sugar-free sweeteners. I had to import this one or bring in a uh, contraband outside dressing here. And it's one of the biggest offenders I think of all. If you're eating anything from Walden Farms, I would maybe double check that because it's a sugar-free, fat-free, calorie-free ranch and they make that for everything. But look here, guys. First of all, there's a litany of many, many issues going on here. But what do they use as a sweetener here? Sucralose, along with just a ton of really bad ingredients here. So you don't want to eat anything with sucralose. You might find that in uh, Diet Coke, another thing they don't sell here, all those kind of sodas. Instead, get, well, I didn't pick it up, but Zevia, right? Even though Zevia has natural flavors, it's sweetened with stevia, way better for you. And then we talk about sugar really quick. And sugar is, I mean, arguably just as bad as the fake sugar. Here's a salad dressing that is the highest sugar content, one of the highest on the market. It's nine grams of added white cane sugar is the number one ingredient per two tablespoons. So I get really nervous when I see stuff like that. I get really nervous when I see what well, picked up at Walmart. I have a feeling Art's gonna drink this as soon as we're done with the video, right Art? <laughs> I'm murder a Coke right now. 20 ounces of Coca-Cola with how many grams of sugar there? 65 grams of added sugar in a big 20 ounce bottle. Guys, 65 ounces is literally 14 grams of white sugar here. Really bad news. What did I say? Yeah, thank you. No, that, that, you might die if you have that. You're right. It's 60. It's uh, over uh, 10 teaspoons of sugar. And then Gatorade here. Same thing. You're gonna drink this after a workout or after a harsh uh, workout session. Where's the ingredients? Right there. There we go. Number one ingredient is water and sugar. Dextrose is another word for sugar here. And then how many grams of sugar here? 34 grams. So if you want an electrolyte drink, don't drink this. Don't drink the drops, right? Stay away from this stuff because this has all the added either fake sugar or real sugar. There's one on Amazon called Highlight. It's the only one on the market I can find that is just pure electrolyte drops. What is electrolytes? It's a combination of essential minerals like uh, calcium, magnesium, potassium, stuff your body needs. You just drop those in water. When you start adding it to sugar and sucralose and natural flavors, you're defeating the purpose in the first place. I'll leave that Amazon link down below. But look out for fake sugar and look out for sugar in the form of dextrose, high fructose corn syrup, anything. And if you're keeping score at home, this may have been the first time that Bobby naturally said stevia rather than stevia. <laughs> in part one of this video last week, we talked about canola oil and how you want to avoid canola oil at all costs because it's highly processed and highly refined at such high heat with a chemical called hexane that it's really bad for your body. Unless it's expeller pressed canola oil, which is very common for middle aisle foods, then it's okay. But the world of oils is very confusing. You'll have expeller pressed, you'll have 
processed, refined, cold pressed virgin, and the one I want to talk about right now, high oleic. So what does high oleic mean and where are you going to see it? Well, here's one product that I find it in. These are frozen waffles. It's actually a brand that I like. It's paleo waffles and everything looks good here, right? Tiger nut flowers, low carb, cassava's uh, paleo, high oleic sunflower oil. So what the heck does high oleic mean? Because I get that question a lot. It strictly refers to the fatty acid profile of the oil. And actually it's a heart healthier fatty acid profile, but it's good for you, right? Here's the deal though. It says high oleic, but it's missing two more really important words. It's missing the words expeller pressed. So if it was expeller pressed, high oleic sunflower oil, then it'd be great because even though it has the heart healthy fatty acid profile of the sunflower oil, by not being expeller pressed, it's very highly processed and refined, much the same way canola oil is, right? Canola, sunflower, safflower, peanut, corn, soybean, those are very processed oils. So if you see them in the middle aisles, they have to say expeller pressed. While we showed you those tortilla chips the other week that have the expeller pressed canola oil, and while, it's not, while it's not something you want to eat every day, it is better than regular canola oil. This is just a side note when we shopped at Walmart before we came here. These are tortilla chips here on the border and you can't find this ingredient at uh, Whole Foods here. But look at this. These are cooked in a vegetable oil blend that may contain cottonseed oil. You guys, it is so hard to find cottonseed oil. If you think canola oil is bad, which I do, cottonseed oil is the most refined processed agricultural oil on the planet. They use so many chemicals to extract the oil. There's no health benefits. It's really, really bad news. I just had to show that because if you ever see cottonseed oil in the grocery store, run Forrest, run! That's bad news, right? So now that you know Ohio Lake has to have expeller pressed, just for educational purposes, we talked about this before, cold pressed and extra virgin. What do those mean? These are actually the best kind of oils you can get because it means it hasn't been processed and refined at all. It only has been extracted, the oil from the olive in this case, via a stone or a press that has no heat at all. So it's virgin or cold pressed. Hence, this has the highest polyphenol count of any oil. Really good stuff. And then you'll see something sometimes like refined coconut oil. This is not extra virgin. It's virgin expeller pressed. I'd rather cook with cold press extra virgin, but this is not that bad. The most important thing is look for that high oleic. It's really important and you don't want to be fooled. It's got to say expeller pressed. Uh, let's talk about bread, right? We have whole videos dedicated to bread, but there's two ingredients in breads I really want you guys to avoid. And item number one is actually something you can't find here at Whole Foods because they have a decent, a very decent bread selection, but I got this loaf of whole wheat bread at uh, Walmart. And even though the first ingredient is whole wheat, which is good, Dios mio, look at that. There's a ton of ingredients here I don't like, but anytime you see the words dough conditioner in a bread, I would put it back. So what is a dough conditioner? Dough conditioners are chemicals that make the bread bake quicker. Why would you want to bake bread quicker? What does Mr. Wonderful say on Shark Tank? Money, right? You bake bread quicker. You can make more lo loaves per day. You can get them to the shelf and they can sell them. So you really want to avoid the dough conditioners because they're pure chemicals, right? So that's public enemy number one when it comes to bread. What's public enemy number two? Well, we talked about this in the bread video. Don't be fooled by the front of packages, like natural wheat, cracked wheat. That means nothing. You, if you eat grains, you want to see whole grains. And look at this. You might think this is a good bread. You pick it up. First ingredient, cracked wheat. Second ingredient, water than unbleached enriched wheat flour. There's no whole wheat there, you guys. And what's the problem? Because when you don't eat whole grains, you're eating simple grains. All the nutrition from the whole grain, like the bran, the hull, is taken away. You don't want to eat that. So what do you want to eat? You want to eat uh, organic sprouted breads. I don't want to ruin the video I did uh, before, but check it out. When you get sprouted organic grains like this, there's tons of nutrition. It's a whole grain. It's a complex carbohydrate. That's what you want. You're never going to see any kind of dough conditioners or nasty preservatives. These guys are the real deal, whereas the other ones are not. Going back to that last segment, I know Bobby gave some rave reviews about this bread and how wheat is the first ingredient. I think he needs to get those contacts again. Water, all wheat. <laughs> Number right. two. I think I was taking over the two. channel between today and that Costco video. And on the comments down below in that video, you guys are giving Art some serious praise. <laughs> Man, I gotta say, 
it's much tougher to find some bad ingredients when you're shopping here at Whole Foods. Uh, you're gonna find them at much more grocery stores than here, but I did find the one I wanted to talk about. And this is that Better Than Bouillon, it's very popular. But anytime I see maltodextrin in a label, I get really nervous. Plus this also has yeast extract. We talked about that in part one of the video. That's basically another word for MSG. And it's got natural flavors and a touch of cane syrup. So what is maltodextrin? You're gonna find maltodextrin in a lot of the products here in the middle aisle because it's a food preservative. And when things live here, they need it. The problem is maltodextrin comes from corn. So number one, it's high on the glycemic index. It's gonna spike your blood sugars. And unless it's organic, like this one is right there, right? It's gonna come from GMO corn because it's made from corn. Just so you know, we talked about this before. If something is organic, it's automatically non-GMO by law. But if you see non-GMO, that does not mean organic. It just means it's not from a GMO seed. I really want you guys to avoid uh, maltodextrin because you don't need it. Plus, if you're watching your blood sugars, that maltodextrin is high in the GI, it's gonna mess you up. So be careful. It's in a lot of products in the middle aisle and I don't want my family members ingesting that stuff. All right, Flavor Family, that is it. Art, we're done. <laughs> We're done. I told you, that's art being art, y'all. Uh, that is it for the top food items you want to avoid at the grocery store and not really put into your body. Um, art doesn't care. He's loving the Coca-Cola, the real thing. But uh, guys, like, subscribe, share. The only way this channel keeps growing is by you <laughs> spreading the love. Art and I have two more videos going below us right now. But we will see you very soon. Until then, we say unto you like we always do. Hashtag keep on cooking. Mad love and peace. <laughs> That's what you get, Art.